views. I think, though, that you have to realize if you, if you look at the science, forget your taxation theory, because actually it's not taxation. What it's trying to do, the taxation bit, is sitting there, is one tiny fragment of saying that the polluters of our planet, the companies that are excessively polluting, the only way that they will respond and listen is if they're incentivized through a tax scheme to stop them polluting. And that tax scheme isn't in your pocket. That is the companies, the Exxons of this world, the companies that are going out there and, and needlessly polluting our water systems, our natural systems. I think it's sad, sir, that you can, you, you, you know, I, I, I appreciate and respect people's views on both sides of the argument. That's what a debate is about. And I appreciate you, your views in, in taking this debate to me. But I would also say that it's sad because what you're doing here is giving people a false sense of hope. Our planet is in a seriously bad way right now. And if we continue to, to put out this rhetoric which says this doesn't exist, which you are doing and you are promoting, then all it's going to do is delay the situation that is going to cause more problems for your children, for my children, and the future of this planet. We've got a serious problem. You can deny it all you like, but as the storms and the weather systems around us, whether they're yeah. cyclical or not, start to increase, which they are, then we're going to find ourselves in a more precarious position as humanity moves forward into the future. All right, I've only got one more question for you, uh, David Mayor de Rothschild, sure. and that is that you you know, bring up the fact that, that I'm in denial and I'm giving people a false sense of hope. All the major, the European Space Agency... Uh, the uh, NASA, all of the major real scientific organizations show massive solar system warming, and it's the engine, the sun, that is driving that. And uh, it, it, all the past studies and archaeological records show that life blooms and increases in a carbon dioxide, oxygen rich, because the two are tied together, and that we've actually been oxygen and carbon dioxide poor and have really been in somewhat of a dead cycle compared to, that's why they find coal at the North Pole and the South Pole from all the life, uh, and that this is actually a prime driver. And we see areas of the world that were going through uh, uh, the desert process, the desertification, now greening unexpectedly, and that uh, we should welcome uh, climate change and that it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, you're saying we need to have a stable climate. Sir, the planet's never had a stable climate. The, pl the planet has, for the last 12,000 years, we've been in a very, very stable, comparatively to the four and a half billion years the planet's been around, um, period of climatic systems. Our, our systems have been incredibly stable. I agree with you. We need carbon as a driver of life. I'm not denying that. You know, we have huge pockets of reserves of carbon, which, are under, which for millions of years have taken millions of years um, to spend, uh, stored under our Earth's crust. We are releasing that, and we're putting it up. And let's not confuse two things here. Let's not confuse biological carbon and carbon that's emitted through the burning of fossil fuels. In, one is in the United States in the atmosphere, and one goes through the natural cycle. So we're confusing two things when we're pumping out, not only are we pumping out excess carbon, more than the natural system, but we're slash and burn agriculture, we're cutting down our carbon sinks to balance that. Our oceans are incredibly precarious. They, they absorb 40% of our world's atmospheric carbon. Oh, I agree that, that, I right. agree that... And if our temperatures get warmer... Well, let, me just, go, let me just say this, what? see, but see, you're tying together plankton blooms and yeah. uh, and different differentials in with carbon dioxide itself, and isn't, isn't the different, and it's not just one tax, I mean, they're now tying uh, the different environmental movements that, oh, we need a tax on more than one child, which really is a one-child policy, so we already see this whole move to restrict carbon, really a tax on on life, a tax on breathing. I don't think it's a tax on life and a tax on breathing. I think the fact of the matter is we have one planet. We don't have a spare one. We know that our systems, and, you know, whatever you want to call it, whether you want to call it a cyclical change, whether you want to call it um, global warming, you know, everyone has their own opinion. And I think the fact of the matter is, for me personally, the time for debate is over. This is no longer about does it exist, does it not exist, who's doing what, who's not. As we keep on talking, the planet, the very thing that supports So we us, need to just stop thinking world. and just agree it's happening and go do whatever Al Gore I'm says no, and just, and just world no. government will save us. Well, no. okay, in a perfect no, world, what no, should we do, Rothschild? In the perfect what world, should we okay? do to save ourselves? You, Tell me, you, save me, listen, save I'll me. Tell you what. 
I'm saving you. In the perfect world, sir, you start to use common sense, which is obviously something that, some, you know, from some of your comments, I'm afraid I don't see. Save so, me. Oh, God. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> you know, save anyway, the young but... ladies? Oh, Lord Rothschild, <laughs> save me. You're such a dashing adventurer, like yeah, Indiana well, Jones. Listen, oh, listen, oh, Lord listen, Rothschild, listen, take listen, me, listen, Lord listen, Rothschild. You sound, you sound like, you sound like, I listen, Mr. 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 Oil Baron sitting in the south there. If you want to start making <laughs> funny noises like that on the phone, that's fair enough, oil boy. So get back onto your little rodeo ball. Go out there and deny it all. Protect your oil shares and make sure that your kids, who you talked about, don't have a, don't have, you know, don't have any any planet to live on. But anyway, I have to go, my friends. I hey, listen, I just want to tell you something. Your family has caused a lot of pain in this world, from what they pull with Napoleon to all of it, and we're tired of it. And and, sure. I, and I'm not going to judge you by your family, but look at what you're doing out here, pushing this whole global tax hysteria, this global tax uh, scam, and it's for a common sense. Future. I'm pushing common sense. I'm pushing education. I don't push one side of the argument or the other. All I'm doing is providing information for people to make an informed decision. Well, you're providing oh, bad information and slogans and can't sure. and, and, and logos, and it's not going to work at the it's end of the day. So I just want you to know, as well. when you're at family reunions, let them know that America and the people, free humanity, I'll you. will prevail. Time, union, and if you send me an email address, we'll invite you along. You can come and join us. Yeah, I bet. We'd love to, uh, we'd love to, ha we'd love to have you. Oh, now, are those the estates that you guys took over in the French Revolution you engineered, or are those the estates in England? Oh, those are, those are the hidden ones that we hide under the ground that no one knows about, and, you know, come on, man. Well, oh, I mean, you mean you the know, one I snuck to, into in you, Northern California? You, yeah, the one that you've been, you, you spend too long on the internet looking at conspiracy theories. I'd say, you know what I'd say? You sound like someone who needs to get out of the studio. Oh, yes. The world. I've never go left outside, Texas. Actually, I... And, and go outside and go outside and reconnect with nature. See what you're missing. Well, Rob, Sal, let me just say this. You know, you also make these hayseed, you know, com uh, comments about how we're a bunch of bumpkins and out here on our bulls in Texas. Said, I never said. I never said anything about that. The I implication was myself. clear. The implication. An elitist. You, an elitist implication. Don't my words. There's no elitist implication. I spend a lot. I'm a farmer. I live off the land. I farm my own. I have my own cattle. I have my own. You stock. are a farmer. My time. And we are and, slaves and, and, on your plantation. Well, you know what? I work for myself, and I don't have anyone who works for me. So at that point, sir, I would say again. Oh, really? What you is know, your you wealth? You always talk time, about right? you always talk about oil shares. Your family in England, it turned out, Financial Times of London owned Gazprom when they arrested one of the oligarchs. It turned out he was just a front. You guys are worth in the aggregate trillions of dollars, tens of trillions leverage, you, you and you sit here and you just because I live in Texas say I'm you know you know say that I'm from the movie Dallas and I'm sitting on top of oil pad. These are all your insecurities that you're putting across here, sir. I've never said anything. You've of said sort. repeatedly I'm here. that I'm, I'm, that I'm defending my oil stocks. Well, you probably, I guess you probably are. I don't know because your I family, your you family bankrolled the Rockefellers sir. and Carnegie. And I you guys own different. the Bank of England, and you issue the world fiat currency, and you're the guys that have got the third world nations on billion-dollar loans own, owing $40 billion at loan-sharking numbers. So don't try it, Rothschild. And then, I mean, again, again, you've obviously, you know, like your, like your climate facts, you're getting yourself into a confused situation, my friend. Yeah, I'm not confused. And, these and, are, these are published okay. facts, Rothschild. Well, well, like I said, email them to me. Let me have a look at your Are you denying facts. that N.M. Rothschild is not involved in the... Uh, OECD and the Bank of International Settlements, the IMF and the World Bank, because we've had Joseph Stiglitz, Chief Economist, World Bank, Nobel Prize winner here on air to talk about it. Yeah, well, you, I'll listen into the show after I'm off the phone, sir. All right, well, listen, I want to challenge you to visit Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com so you can see the front line of the resistance. We will defeat eugenics. We will defeat the world feudal state. We will prevail. Uh, let me ask you a question. Do you believe in the whole social Darwinistic eugenics movement? Because that's where the modern environmental movement came from, and that's where Prince Philip and Prince Charles and all of this scum get their ideas. Listen, I'm here to talk about my book, The Global Warming Survival Handbook. I'm sure you're going to buy one. I'm here to talk about the concerts that are happening this weekend. I'm here to talk about climate change. Are you guys, are, are you guys pushing, you to, make that's, that's all, are you guys pushing to make kids read it? That's all. Are you guys pushing to make kids read it in schools? It's not, it's, it's not for kids, and it's not in schools. It's a book for anyone who wants to pick it up, like any other information book. But I'm there. looking at it. I mean, I've got quotes from you saying here that this is for the children. No, you, you're, again, so you're, you're getting your facts wrong. This book isn't for the children. This book is the official book that goes to the Live Earth concert series. It goes around the globe. Seven Let countries. me dig it out because I have a copy of the book here. Uh, you it wrote another book do. then about children. How many no. books have you written? I've written more than you probably. <laughs> well, I've, I've only written one and I'm writing another right now, but...
Uh, but, but what I'm trying to understand is how many have you written a children's book? 